tonight in a theme that rhymes. God, work with my mind. Get me prepared for what you have for me. There are many of you, you don't have things tonight that you should have. Therefore, he should already be possessing certain things tonight, but you don't have it. You don't have it. And the reason you don't have it is your mind. Listen, these are promises. I know we laugh, but, but these are promises. You will eat the labor of your hands. You shall be happy. It shall be well with you. When you think about what you're going through, do you have that in your being? Do you know that it's well? Do you know that it's all good? Based upon what, Pastor? Romans 8, 28. For we know that all things work together for the what? Good. It is all Look at Proverbs 16 and 20. I'm about to come in. Proverbs 16, 20. We got to get this in us. And some of you got to stop letting folk mess with your happiness. I mean, that's you sitting there like that again. They robbed you the last time and here you is again letting them do it all over again. When you going to learn? Proverbs 16, 20. Proverbs 16, 20. He who heeds the word wisely will find what? Good. He who heeds the word wisely will find what? Good. See, let me tell you something. When you heed in the word wisely, the reason you're going to find good is because you're going to handle situations wisely. You're going to handle Handle matters wisely. You're going to know how to deal with things. When you heed the word wisely, God going to teach you how to deal with people. Come on, he's going to teach you how to deal with situations and circumstances. He's going to walk you literally through a process of teaching you things that get you down, how to avoid them, how to watch for them. He's going to walk you through a process of things that try to keep you stressed out. And then he's literally going to raise you up and teach you how, listen to me, to be stress-free. Very few people live a stress-free life. You know why? Because as I said earlier, things are constantly coming. Things are constantly happening. So f to live a stress-free life, it has to be done on purpose. It has to be done on purpose. Now I'm back to people. Somebody got a problem with people today. People are the source of your unhappiness. A person is the source of why you stay depressed. And if you know the source. But you still entertaining it. Then I say about you. That you like being unhappy. And I just got a back up from you. You don't want joy. Anybody ever been in a relationship with somebody? Whether it could be a family member or some other type of relationship. Whether the person just love fighting. Love arguing. Anybody ever been there? Some of you need to say yes because you was that person that loved to fight and argue all the time. <laughs> One happy until somebody was so arguing. Come on, some of you were them people. Folk like that love misery. You have to learn to go to work and do your job and be happy. And sometimes to do it, you got to keep your nose where it belongs. Sometimes we unhappy about things and we done stuck our nose. But why, why are you over there? They need to tighten up. You ain't even in that department. See, that's also how I learned to be happy. I learned things that I needed to deal with, Brother Daniel. Then I allowed God to show up. You don't need to deal with that. Okay, okay then. That's not anything you need to jump into. Hey, okay. But what happened when we jump anyway? Can't handle it. Now we call in on God and God like I told you don't get involved in that anyway. It's some arguments with people. Don't get in that. 
What you think? I don't think nothing. I won't live alone. I know I'm teaching right. And there's some folk in here today. This ain't nothing but the Holy Spirit. There's somebody you got a problem with people. And some of us got people in our family that we know when we see them, I got to deal with them. You know they are a source of unhappiness. Even some church folk. Some folk go to church every Sunday and they're the most miserable people you ever want to see. And then go out and try to have the nerve to witness to somebody. Where you go? Place of refuge? You got my permission to tell them you visit up here. He who heeds the word wisely will find good. Whoever trusts in the Lord, happy is he. Whoever trusts in the Lord, happy is he. Pastor, I trust God, but I'm not happy. You, you. That's not biblically possible. That's what I had to tell myself years ago. If I'm trusting God, as much as I claim to be trusting him, why this stuff getting to me the way it is? I remember years ago, this is true. When a member used to t say these words to me, and they just called down or other church or whatever, I need to meet with pastor. That's all it took. If that call came on a Tuesday, all the way to Sunday, I'm like, what the world they want? What is going on? What is wrong? Oh, Jesus. Oh, Lord, God, please. Have your way, Lord. I'm binding enemy. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Lord. Wonder, wonder. God, what they mad about now? I don't know what's going on. That was my mind. Because they didn't leave nothing. Because more folks, they got good news. They was like, hey, tell Pastor, I need to see Pastor. Just help me tell the folks. I need to see Pastor. I said, what they say? They said, they just need to meet with you. Oh, man. Every day, just, just worry. Then it comes Sunday. They walk in. I said, yeah, well, let's pray. Yeah, we'll talk. Pray not talk. Pastor, it ain't going to take long. I just been thinking about you, and I just wanted to bless you, and I just wanted to do it in person. I, it ain't going to take me long. I just wanted to give you this. And, and then when they leave, I'll be like, oh, God. I say, oh, this. <laughs> they had a blessing. <laughs> and then the Lord let me know, if you don't stop that, you're going to kill yourself. You're going to have a heart attack. And the more the church grows, the more calls you'll probably get. Now, you don't spend six days worrying, and the person will come to bless you. But then you got the nerve to get in front of the phone and talk about how much you trust me. So now I get to the point when they call and they say, hey, I need to see Pastor. All is, all is well. All is well. Why am I saying that? Because sometimes some of you worry about things. But then be claiming you got all this great trust in God. Pastor, I, just, you, I know you're saying it right. God bless you for saying it. I just, I, I see, I don't know how these bills going to get paid. How they been getting paid. God going to help you. Pastor, this job getting so stressful. I'm telling you, I told you before they paid you all that money, they was going to bring you problems. Come on, it's some job when they pay you real good, they going to bring you problems. And just in case you ain't got a phone, they're going to give you a company phone. So when we have a problem, we can reach it any hour of the day. And then you sit up there having an ulcer and don't own the company. Give that job to God and know it is well. Do your very best to be productive. Come on. I know it's right. If you don't, you're going to be like some folk. As soon as they leave the job, they need a drink. Or they in a closet somewhere drinking. On the job, in a closet sipping. Every time she's about walking around with a coffee cup, don't mean coffee in it now. 
And I'm going to tell you, they're our fault. <laughs> oh, Lord, should I even say that? They're our fault. If you ain't got the Holy Ghost, you're going to need some Hennessy to deal with them. I had an uncle, nothing bothered him. Nothing. He get his car repossessed. He was broke. Nothing bothered him. I say, Unc, what's going on? Yeah. <laughs> they got it. <laughs> Always come modo. That's it. Hey, I'm feeling pretty good right now. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Isaiah 3. 